Hello and welcome everyone to another exciting edition of HL Chemistry Flipped Classroom. Um, this is Mr. Los. We'll be talking about bond character and polarity. So let's get excited. Yeah, chemistry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna uh, we're gonna get it going here. Talk about some bonding. Talk about the fact that things are a little bit more complicated than you've been led to believe. A lot of times in chemistry, you know, we present something simply at first and then kind of develop the idea more strongly later. We've been talking about ionic versus covalent. Um, it turns out it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, you know, there's a reference to a really old movie, um, You Can't Handle the Truth. You know, I don't know if any of you, this movie came out way before you guys were born. Um, but it's like, yeah, you know, at first you're kind of like this young, innocent little chemistry student and you can't quite handle what's really going on. But um, we're going to try to talk about some more complexity that takes place in bonding. And um, <laughs> so, as it turns out, you know, um, like I said, I forgot that was on here. Um, it's a little more complicated than you've been led to believe. Uh, but we're going to talk about something called bond character. This is something that could reference like in ID exams and things like that quite a bit. Um, it's not really the case that bonds are either ionic or covalent. Um, it's actually a little bit of everything and can be in between. And we call it the bond character. Um, and it's the difference between electrons being transferred or shared. Situations where there's mostly complete transference of electrons, we say that bond has a lot of ionic character. Or where there's uh, a lot of sharing or complete equal sharing, we call that a high covalent character. But what can happen is we can have some sharing and uh, some unequal sharing. So when electrons are shared unequally, that's a type of bond that we call polar covalent. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you kind of a spectrum here and try to, try to make some sense of how this all works. So um, if we think about this bonds over here on this side where we have a high ionic character. That's where electrons are going to be transferred. So the little red dot here is an electron. So in an ionic bond, what we have is one of our atoms loses possession of their electrons, the other one takes it, and then this guy gets positive, this guy gets negative, and they're going to stick together for that reason. So that would be a high ionic character bond. On the other hand, we can have a high covalent character. So we have these two happy little fellows here. They have two electrons. It's right in between them. They're sharing them totally equally, so that bond would have a high covalent character. But then we can have everything in between. We can have sharing, but um, maybe not equal sharing. Like maybe you have a big brother, big sister, or maybe even little brother, little sister that doesn't, uh, you know, share the uh, PS4 or whatever the, um, you know, video game system of the day is when you're watching this equally. So here we have, you know, this guy here. He's see, he's negative. He has his thumbs down. Um, the electrons are not being shared equally, they're being pulled more towards one side. So they're not shared evenly, they're not exactly transferred. This is what we call a polar uh, covalent bond. And bonds fit somewhere along the spectrum. It's a continuum, it's, it's a shades of gray all along the way, um, going from the highest ionic character bonds to the highest covalent character bonds. So one thing that does, and I'm going to develop this idea a little bit further, is it results in a partial negative charge on the more electronegative atom. So the bond, uh, the, 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 the bond becomes a bit like a magnet, um, or the molecule, as we'll talk about. So um, this is just another little illustration here. Non-polar covalent bond, we have two hydrogens. They can share electrons equally, or um, these two, which Chlorine is highly electronegative. It's kind of an electron hog, so it's going to tend to it's going to tend to keep those electrons more for itself um, compared to the hydrogen. So we've got a nonpolar and a polar covalent bond here. Um, so in a real life example, um, if this is hydrogen and fluorine, here, let me see. Uh, yeah, okay. So they share a bond. So we have the Lewis structure, and they're sharing a bond, sharing a pair of electrons rather. And because of the fact that fluorine is more electronegative than hydrogen, those electrons tend to get pulled towards fluorine side of the bond. And that results in a polarity. So this little molecule is a bit like a magnet. It's got a positive side and a negative side. The hydrogen is the positive side, the fluorine is the negative side. There's 
a couple different ways to indicate that in a Lewis structure. You need to be aware of both of them. You need to make this kind of funny looking S here and a plus and uh, another one of the minus that indicates partial positive or partial negative charge. Or one of these little, they're really actually kind of like vector arrows where this is, this is supposed to look kind of like a plus sign, I think. And we, um, we point the arrow towards the, the, the place where the electrons are tending to drift to. Now, um, it's worth, um, I think, thinking about this kind of carefully. So let me show you something else. So here we have two atoms. Notice um, there's a difference in electronegativity. Atom A has a lower electronegativity. Atom B has kind of a medium electronegativity. So these, this represents a pair of electrons that they're sharing. And um, electrons are going to be pulled more towards B's side. We can represent that um, with sort of a map like this, where uh, electrons are being pulled more towards this red side than this blue side. Um, now, what would be true is if, if I turn on an electric field, like let's say this was just a molecule in the gas state, and I turn on an electric field, it would, in fact, orient itself um, very much like a little magnet would in, in line with the magnetic field, or with the positive side attracted to the negative side of the electric field, and the negative side attracted to the positive side. So a real molecule would rotate just like this. So when we say a bond, is a bond or a molecule, as we'll talk about later, is polar, we're saying it, it really does develop uh, poles very much like a magnet, positive side and negative side. And the negative side is always going to be, again, where the more electronegative atom is, is that, that side of the molecule. It gets a little more complicated if there's more than two atoms, but we will talk about that. So basically, bond character is going to be determined by a couple of things. The, um, the main thing you want to think about is the electronegativity and the electron negativity difference between the two elements. For the most part, especially if we're just thinking ionic and covalent, the greater the difference in electronegativity between two elements, the uh, more of an ionic character the bond is going to have, and the more similar an electronegativity the more of a covalent character a bond is going to have. This is because electronegativity is a measure of the tendency to attract electrons in a bond. So if the two electron, if the two electronegativities are, let's say, exactly the same, like in a FF bond or a diatomic element, they're going to share those electrons equally. Where if there is a large discrepancy in electronegativity, um, uh, the, the more electronegative element is going to be able to basically completely take the electrons, and there's going to be a transference. And this is what almost always happens in a metal or a non-metal situation, because um, usually the non-metal is significantly more electronegative than the other one. Not always, though. There are, um, and this is going to be new to you if you took chemistry in the past. There are going to be some metal, um, non-metal bonds that are considered, you know, polar covalent or some other things. Um, so, in your data booklet on table 29, there is what we call one of these triangular. It's called a triangular bonding diagram. Um, Basically, uh, you got two axes here. It looks a little complicated, and you know what? I mean, most of the time, you won't actually need to use this or think about it. Um, there'll be kind of ways around it. Um, you can mainly just think about trends in electronegativity, but anyway, um, on the y-axis here, if you're thinking about a bond, what you're going to do is you're going to think about the uh, difference in electronegativity of the two elements, subtract them. Notice the absolute value of their difference, so subtract them whatever order you want to, but make it positive. And then their average electronegativity. So you figure that out, and then you can kind of figure out where in this chart, ionic, covalent, or even metallic, the bond is going to um, be. So um, also in your data booklet, if you need electronegativity values, this is great to make sure that you know. This, this table tells you some three different nice things to know. Affinity, electron affinity, ionization energy, electronegativity. Consult the key here. The electronegativity is numbered down on the bottom. Notice we've talked about kind of goes up in this direction. Fluorine is the most electronegative. They don't assign, for the most part, electronegativities to the noble gases, except xenon here for some reason. So this next thing that we're gonna want to that we're gonna be doing here, you're gonna want you're gonna want your data booklet so that you can use both of these things, because you need both these things to do what we're doing here. So you don't want to pause it right now if you don't have those. Um, or I don't know, look it up online if you don't have it with you. I'm sure you can find it. Okay, so we're going to classify each one of these bonds as either um, ionic, polar covalent, um, really this should be non-polar covalent here, uh, polar covalent, metallic, 
Now, we, we should be able to just right away know that this is ionic because, um, you know, it's metal, non-metal. But let's just, let's just use the chart and check it out. If we go back, we can see that lithium is 1 and um, coin is 3.2. So, first of all, the electronegativity negativity difference is 2.2. That's one thing we want to figure out. And then we want to figure out the average electronegativity. So um, 3.2 plus 1 would be 4.2. And there's two things, so just a straight up average here. So basically 2.2 and 2.1 is where we're looking. And um, let's see where that fits in. So we go back to our little uh, triangular thing there. Um, basically, they were both right around 2.1, so the average electronegativity is here. And then, uh, yeah, so it's somewhere right in here. And again, no surprise that that first bond is an ionic. The connectivity difference is about 2.2 uh, 2 or whatever it was, but they're both right about here. So again, no surprises, an ionic bond there. Um, now, when you have the exact same thing bonded to itself, well, it's going to have the same electronegativity, um, and uh, it's... So in the case of chlorine, um, it's going to be 3.2 minus 3.2. That's going to be 0 always when we're finding the difference, right? That's going to be 0. But the average electronegativity um, is 3.2 because it would be 6.4 divided by 2. And they have the same electronegativity. So um, again, uh, not, not hopefully a huge surprise, but um, the electronegativity difference is 0. And then it's about 3.2, so we're here squarely and completely nonpolar covalent. Um, anyway, why don't you go ahead and take a second and find these last three, and um, then we'll go on from there. Okay, here we have it nice and uh, neatly solved here on my slide. Um, H and Cl, their electronegativity difference is 1. Their um, average electronegativity is uh, you know, about 2.7 um, or something like that. Um, close enough. Um, so the electronegativity difference is 1, average is 2.7, so it's right here in the polar covalent range of things. Um, in F, the difference in electronegativity of 1, average electronegativity of 3.5. Again, that's going to be in the polar covalent realm of things. And then aluminum, um, they have the same element, so the same electronegativity difference is 0. Uh, average would be the same as aluminum's electronegativity, which is 1.6. So uh, hopefully it's no surprise, between aluminum atoms we have a metallic bond. So we've got the C of electrons going in and all that kind of thing. Okay, uh, I think that just about wraps it up for bond character. Um, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.